Okay, uh, the topic of this video is going to be graph search algorithms. Um, and we're looking at this in the context of AI, but in fact, graph search is just meat and potatoes computer science. It turns out that uh, all kinds of problems in computer science can be represented as graphs, or lots of different problems can. So being able to find paths through graphs is a pretty, uh, pretty generally useful thing. Um, so let's take a look at our generic searching algorithm as a starting point. Uh, and we'll take another look at this in a minute probably, but here's the algorithm. And it looks a little bit cryptic at first, but I think it's not too bad. Uh, what are the inputs to the algorithm? This is a graph, so this is our problem represented as a graph. In fact, um, if we were going to program this, this could be a program that sort of generates this graph on the fly, so it needn't be a fully specified graph. Um, some set of start nodes, the goal, so this is the specification of the problem in graph form. Um, and obviously the output is going to be the path, the solution. So here's the algorithm, and we've got one local variable that's declared here, so this frontier. Um, so this starts to look a little bit confusing if you're not, um, if your set notation is a little bit rusty. This is sort of set builder notation, right? Um, and what we have here is the, the form of the elements in the set. And then this is a, a logical condition, and if this is true, that thing's in the set. So uh, this angle bracket notation is the way our author uh, indicates a tuple. So this is a single element tuple. Um, and it, this is saying that this tuple with s in it is in the set if s is one of the start states. Um, and these are tuples, right? These, this set is where we're keeping the paths, the possible paths to the solution. So it's a set of these little tuples that represent paths through the graph. So S0 would be the first state, dot, 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 up to the last state. So we're maintaining um, a set of partial paths, essentially. And that's how we're, we're keeping track of things during the search. So if we skim back up to this figure, just to give you a sort of general idea of what this is going to look like, this frontier, right, these things are what we're storing in that set. And in fact, right, notice that this has ends of paths on frontier. So the set contains do, 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 as the first element potentially, bump, 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 as the second element potentially. Um, so it's a set of these paths. And this, this is just indicating sort of where all of those paths that we're currently examining uh, end. So that's the notation. Let's, let's briefly step through sort of what the algorithm does. It's pretty straightforward. We start out by putting sort of this trivial path to the goal state, or to the start state on the frontier. And then we continue this loop until there's nothing left on the frontier. We take something off that frontier set, um, and this is a little bit underspecified, and we'll, we'll see the implications of that later. But uh, for this general version of the algorithm, it just says take an element out of the set. Um, we check to see if that path that we removed from the frontier actually ended in a goal, and if so, we're done. So uh, this is something to sort of notice. We don't actually check to see if we reached a goal when something goes onto the frontier. We check when it's removed from the frontier. So uh, at this point, maybe we haven't found the goal yet. So this is maybe the most little confusing chunk of notation here. So what this is saying is that we just add all of the newly reachable um, paths to the frontier based on the, the path that we just removed from the frontier. So S sub K is the end of the path that we just removed from the frontier. And this is saying, all right, add whatever new paths are reachable from that previous path. So right, this is saying, um, S is a node that is connected, you know, that there's a connection from S sub K to S uh, in our set of edges. Right, these are the arcs. Um, and this is saying a, one of the node, one of the paths that's going to be added to the frontier is this, um, this state, this path that ends in that state that's reachable from the previous last uh, state. So ooh, that sounded confusing. Um, you know, if we were to look at this picture again, what that means is that if this node had been the node selected from the frontier, um, 
this and this, right, we would add two new paths, one ending here and one ending here, and this guy wouldn't be in the frontier anymore. So I think it's worth doing uh, a really small, simple example and working through it in detail. So let's. Okay, here's that same uh, algorithm we were looking at just a second ago. Um, we've got a paint program opened up here. So let's draw maybe the simplest little uh, search problem I can think of. So we'll have three states, A, B, and C. And there will be an arc from A to B and from B to C. And to make things interesting, we'll have an arc back from B to A. So this is the input to the algorithm. I guess we need to designate a start state. So we'll say that A is the start state and um, C is the end state. So this is what comes into this algorithm. Um, the first step of the algorithm is to put a path, this sort of trivial path with just A in it, into the frontier. So we'll call the frontier F. Let's make this black. Make the frontier F. It's got a set initially. It's just got this one little tuple. Uh, and then we keep stepping through the algorithm. The frontier isn't empty. So we remove um, the only tuple that's in there. So it's empty now. And we add uh, any new paths we can make that are reachable from A. So in this case, that's just B. So now the frontier is going to contain this path. OK, uh, we're cooking right along now. So uh, that's what we've done here. We come back up. The frontier is not empty. So we're going to remove um, this element from the frontier. And now things get a little bit interesting, because from B, two nodes are reachable. We can go back to A, or we can go forward to C. So there's nothing uh, in this algorithm that says we shouldn't put both of those paths onto the frontier. So the new version of the frontier is this, A, B, A. And we now have two elements. We also have the element A, B, C. And this is where um, right, the sort of uh, lack of specificity in this basic search algorithm, this gen generic search algorithm, becomes an issue. So this just says select and remove. And if you read the book, he says something about, well, consider this non-deterministic. It's as if they're all being selected and removed at once, or um, something like that. But if we're going to code this, we need to actually select a particular value from the frontier. And as you can see here, it's really going to matter which, which we select, right? Um, you should be worried, I think, that we might select this value from the frontier, because what's going to happen, that will take us back to this point, which will take us back to this point, which will take us back to this point. So as it stands, this algorithm makes it pretty easy for us to get into an infinite loop. Now, of course, if we pick this value from the frontier, um, then life would be good, right? What would happen in that case? Um, the, the new frontier, this would disappear from the frontier. Um, we would get to this. We would uh, Once we'd remove that, we would check to see if that final state were a goal state, it would be, and we would be done. So this, though, is an issue. Um, actually, we have two issues, right? We have the issue of infinite loops, which we have to be careful of. And we have this sort of design decision that we have to make about which of these, when there's a choice to be made in which, in which path should be removed from the frontier, which do we choose? Um, let's address the issue of, of infinite loops first. So for this, we'll bring the textbook back up. And here we're going to skip ahead a little bit to section 3.7, cycle checking. And this is just making the point, the sort of basic point, that um, cycles are bad, right? Uh, in none of the kinds of problems that we're looking at, is it advantageous to have a cycle in your solution? Because we're, we're always, we always want minimum cost paths in some sense. And we're always going to have the requirement that, that every action has some cost associated with it. So any, any path with a loop in it could always be improved by just removing that loop. So we never want cycles. Um, and the idea here is just, well, if you're going to create uh, a new path that has a cycle in it, don't, right? So include a check in your algorithm. So we could do that. That's great. Um, but the cycle checking problem 
or the problem of cycles is really a, a, an instance of a more general problem of having multiple paths to the goal. So that's what I want to talk about a little bit more is this um, multiple path pruning approach, right? And to show you, right, so obviously um, if you have a cycle, that means that you have multiple paths to the goal. You can take that cycle as many times as you want. So in this case, right, I could have gotten to the goal by going through A to B to C. I could have also gotten to the goal by going from A to B to A to B to C. So that's an issue. But um, multiple path, having multiple paths to the goal can be a problem even if we don't have um, loops in our graph. So here's a little example. Let's say I've got a graph that looks like this. Here's my start state, here's my goal state. Now this is okay, right? I have two possible paths to the goal, which is, you know, maybe unfortunate, it makes searching a little bit harder. Um, but think about what happens when my graph now looks like this. Okay, so now I have two paths to this point in the graph and two paths to this point in the graph, right? I can, I can get here this way, or I can get here this way. So if I, can, if I have two possible ways of getting here and I have two possible ways of getting here, well, then I have four possible ways of getting to this point because I can choose to go to here or here. And hopefully you can start to see a pattern forming here, right? If I make my graph look like this, this once again, doubles uh, the number of ways that I can get from my start state to my goal state. So now there are eight possible ways of, of getting from here to here. Um, and this is, this is not what we want, right? So I've got exponential growth here in the number of paths that I have to explore to find my, my way from the start state to the goal state. So if I you know, extended this pattern up to say 20 levels, all of a sudden I've got a million different ways to reach the goal state, even though it's really a relatively small graph. So this is the problem of multiple paths, and generally or often we just want one way to get to the goal. We're not interested in exploring every possible route. Often we'll want the best way, so we want to find a way to avoid um, searching through all of these redundant routes. So we don't care, if we're here, we don't care how we got here necessarily. That's going to be the intuition. So how can we deal with this problem? Um, we're going to extend our basic search algorithm a little bit. And I've highlighted in blue the small changes that we're going to need to make here. Um, the main thing that we need to do is we need to add a new set, right? So we need to keep track not just of sort of where we are in the search, but where we've been. And that's the point of this explored set. So the explored set is a set of nodes that have already been dealt with, um, and notice that it's a set of nodes, not paths. Every time a, a, a path is removed from the frontier, the end of that path is, is added on to this explored set. Um, and then the only other modification that we need to make is that when we're adding new paths to the frontier, before we add them, Right? We check to make sure that we're not adding something that's already in the explored set. So this will prevent cycles, right? This will keep us from going back. Um, and this is also going to prevent us from exploring multiple paths to the goal. Uh, so this, again, is our set builder notation. This is just saying that for the path uh, to be added to the frontier, it has to meet all of these conditions. It has to, there has to be an arc uh, that makes that path possible. Um, the, the path that we're, or the node that we're going to be reaching is not in the explored set. And we also have to include this condition that says that node that we're going to be adding is not already in the frontier. So we don't want to add things to the frontier multiple times. And this says here, abusive notation. What do I mean by that? Um, this is a little bit hard to express uh, because right, the frontier is a set of paths. It's a set of tuples. And this is a set. So what I mean by that, or this is a state. What I mean by this is that this state doesn't show up in any of those, any of those paths. Okay, so let's go back to that previous uh, simple problem that gave us some difficulties. Uh, open recent. 
this guy. Um, so what would have happened in this case now with our with our modified algorithm, right? At this point in the algorithm, after A was removed, it would have been added to our explored set. Um, then when we got to this point in the algorithm, right, this thing never would have been added because we would have determined that A is already in the explored set, right? This check would have failed, um, so this guy never would have been here. This would have been the only choice, and we would have reached the solution. So in this case, uh, with this fix, we never would have been confronted with this design decision about which uh, path should we select in the frontier. That won't always be the case. Uh, there will, right, we'll generally have lots of values in the frontier, even if we've avoided multiple paths. Uh, so I think that's what we'll talk about next time.